What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see by the title and the thumbnail of this video, today we have an East versus West Coast plant showdown. And our guest for this video has been highly, highly requested here on this channel. I don't know how many times y'all asked me to get this man up over here, but I am so happy to bring that to you today. So our guest slash opponent for today's video is none other than Dave of the Airway District. Please do welcome him to the channel. Please do subscribe to his channel if you aren't already. I'm not sure who would be subscribed to mine <laughs> and not his, but if you are that one, please do go over there and subscribe to his channel. I do want to say thank you for participating in today's video. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, let's get started because I don't know where he's about to take this. I don't know where I'm going to take it. I'm scared a little bit because I got bangers, but you know the situation over here. This is really the thuggish, ruggish bone, all right? So I don't know what's about to happen. So in this video, we are going to be comparing the way that we care for similar plants on the East versus the West. As you know, I am from the East Coast. It's usually cold. It's November and it's still warm right now, but it usually gets cold. So I do have a little slight disadvantage in this little competition. I got bangers. My foreign. My foremans are tens, but I keep them clean. You feel me? They tens, but I keep them clean. So I definitely think that I can hold my own in this competition. As for Dave, he is over there on the West Coast. I am going to let him go into detail about what he has going on over there. So let's go. California. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dave from the YouTube channel. Elroy District. Gotta thank Jasmina Lowe for having me on the channel. We've been trying to collab for a minute and it finally happened. <laughs> so we got a little friendly competition going on right now. East versus West. I'm representing West. I'm from Los Angeles, California. So those of you out there, if you're from Cali all the way to Texas, like this video right now because we represent West. <laughs> but uh, truth be told, I probably lost this competition already soon as Jasmine is standing in front of the camera because y'all already know you already know I ain't even got to say nothing yeah let's get this competition started let's go I'm trying to get my shit together alright where we going where we going where we going so I heard somebody got a problem with Wheezy this is my philodendron Ruizy eye so I know Jasmina has a philodendron Leinami eye. I'm going to put this one up against that Leinami eye. First of all, this is underrated. Philodendron Ruizy eye is a dope ass plant. And I, I feel like people have been sleeping on it because it's a low price and I don't see a lot of people who have it. But this, this is a philodendron. <laughs> like, this is, this puts the philo in philodendron. This joint is so dope to me. And it's one of my favorite plants. Look at that gloss. Get the big leaf. It's just simple and it's a no brainer. Like, come on now. I feel like it's better than the Leinami eye and all of them other plants that look just like it because it has like a broad leaf and you know, they kind of flow out. Like it, it cascade down uh, as soon as the soon as it get big, it don't just stay up like that. So it does have like a cascade effect and it's actually starting to get the ripples kind of like the Patricia. But let me stand back so you can really see. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll put this plant up against anything. Like this is, this really is one of my favorite philodendrons right here just because it's simple. And uh, I got a special connection with this plant. This is Wheezy F Baby. The F is for Phenomenal. Nah, bro, because phenomenal starts with a P. Y'all understand what I mean? <laughs> Ruizi eye. All right. I will say, I was sleeping on the Ruizi eye because I thought it grew like a um, like a snake plant, kind of. I thought it grew like this, like like this. You know what I, mean? I thought it did one of those numbers, but now that I'm seeing it doesn't grow like that, I want one. But it's my turn. It's my turn to show my... Oh, shit. Hold on. Because I was confident before. But God damn. Why would you bring that out? Like that. So hold on. That's a bunch of sphagnum. Some of that premium forest sphagnum moss got up on the leaves. But listen. What I will say is that... <laughs> 
Now I'm giving my loser speech. I lost the first round, but it's okay. I'm gonna I'm stick beside my Philly Dungeon Splendid Eye. This is my Philly Dungeon Splendid Eye. He is a star over here on this channel. He has been through a lot, is what I will say. I have him potted up in a dreamless vessel. It is in a bunch of shit. It's pearl lights, bag malls, coconut husk, pumice, lava rocks, all of that. And um, it's been doing good. It's been growing. This right here is one of his last leaves. This is his newest leaf. They're small. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just hoping that from here, now that I got him up on a little sphagnum moss pole, that he's going to get it together. I'm going to give you round one. I'm going to give him round one. I'm going to give him round one because he said I had the Lamani eye to show. Or the Splendid eye. You don't even want to see the Lamani eye. I'm saying that, but I'm about to show you the Lamani eye anyway. It's a fucking mess too. But um, my Philadelphia and Splendid eye, I'm going to always stick beside him. He will, he will get it together soon. You know, he will be beautiful soon. Like I said, he's been through a lot. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you the Lamani eye just for shits and giggles. <laughs> I just got this, all right? <sighs> just real quick. Don't talk to me. Don't don't talk to me. <laughs> Let me see what the next plan is. Because now I done got fucked up on the first round. That's crazy. So this here is my Anthurium Vitarofolium. So I assume you will put the Polydiflorium up against this one. So the Polydiflorium looks like this one, but uh, I believe it has a velvety texture on the long leaves. This one ain't got that. This one is like the smooth matte leather like texture, you know, and they call this one the necktie anthurium because if you can, it looks like a necktie. It's like, you know. It definitely uh, looks like a necktie. It does have a mid rib that you can see and the veins that go horizontally across, you can't really see that that much. But if I pull up on you, you probably can see the texture of it. So Polydiflorum does have a one up on this one because of that velvety texture. But the good thing about this plant is it is easy to grow. I just got this one off of my shelf right here. And it lives in my living room right now, you know, within unfavorable conditions. So I got a little system going on with this Vitara folium. So when I want it to grow new leaves, I'll put it out in greenhouse conditions, like either outside or somewhere with, you know, some decent humidity. And um, when I don't, when I just want it to be decorative, I'll bring it out and it, it will survive anywhere. I put this in the kitchen. I put this down here in the living room um, at my old house. I had it in that living room. Like, you know, it, it may not grow leaves if the humidity is low, but it definitely survives and it'll just chill out, you know. So I can't wait till these long leaves go ahead and uh, take it to the floor. Like when it go down to the floor, I'll be able to just place this anywhere, hang it up anywhere. And it'll have this long leaf just hanging all the way down. And it's easy to grow. I don't have to worry about it. So this is like no stress. You still get in the pendant shape that flow all the way down. And um, I'm not sure about that pile of Uh Just because it got a velvety texture, I don't know. But this one, I could put it anywhere. <sighs> Smoking me on my own channel. What I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to bring out my Ethereum and throw me a floral. You know you lose it when you when all this is happening. <laughs> I'm ready to take my ball and go home. That's how I'm feeling. I'm ready to take my ball and go home. This is this is not even fair at this point. Like <laughs> Listen, this is my Anthurium Politiflorum. Okay, I have it growing in a drainless pot in the same stuff I have all the rest of my plants growing in, right? I will say that I just got this. It's a seedling. And I kept this leaf for evidence because my son ripped off the bottom of the leaf. So this is what we have going on right now. I mean, I... Uh, shit, what I'm gonna say about this? <laughs> 
just because you got a velvety texture. I fuck with the Palita Florum, all right? A nice one. Mine's just shitty. Don't worry about it. Jasmina, what is yo El Choco Red looking like? The last time I seen yours, it was looking pretty good, but uh, check mine out. Look at that. So this is my philodendron El Choco Red. I think scientifically they call it the Rubri Juvenile. I'm trying to rap to you like juvenile with that back, huh? I don't know. Okay, so rubri means red, juvenile means young. So I guess they trying to say that this plant is red while it's young or whatever. And I did hear that when it gets mature, it's going to start losing the red back. And I'm going to be highly upset when that finally happens because I like, I like this plant. This actually used to be my favorite plant for two years back in 2020 when I first got a hold of it it was very expensive and it was my favorite plant like for sure but uh yeah let's take a look at these i think maybe this the oldest leaf and it nah maybe i shouldn't do leaves in order because i'm about to mess up uh, um i feel like it's growing evenly and i think that that's what i'm that's what i would judge el choco's off of is it growing evenly and how, how deep is the color, you know? Because I'll be seeing some El Chocos out there and I feel like they're getting a little bit too much light because the dark green texture is starting to lighten up. And, you know, I think that does happen on the older leaves, but I like what mine's got going on. And I'm not even sure if this one uh, needs a pole because it doesn't put out aerial roots like that. So I think it just develops a thick stock and it can just stay up on its own. El Choco Red, look at all that red. Uh-uh, why you bent up? The brown. Don't do this to me now that we on camera. Now sp spots wanna pop up. Egg natural. All right, so this right here is my philodendron El Rojo Choco that I never believed was a philodendron El Rojo Choco. What I will say is that I'm still a little bit suspicious about whether it's an El Rojo Choco or not because the back ain't really that red. And you know, I plays with the ring light all the time. It's too goddamn bright. But this is really him. It's a cute little plant. He can hold his own. He's always growing. He just got through a battle with thrips, but we handled that. Don't worry about it. We can't do that. But this is him. And we got a new leaf. It's always a new leaf. There's always a new leaf happening. It is red. Let me show y'all. Let me see. Just barely. So I just did a plant room tour video recently. And I was letting y'all know how that heat was just taking down my <laughs> anthurium collection. Like all that heat out here, out west, was definitely humbling me because I just thought I was... <laughs> I thought I was all that and then you know all my nice anthurium they started to go downhill and here was one of them this is my anthurium warwakwianum esmeralda and Jasmina you probably thought my esmeralda was going to be busted but she survived <laughs> look at her now so you know I, I don't like damaged anthurium leaves uh, this one had like a real bad leaf uh, coming off of this side. And it was a nice size, big leaf, and it was damaged. And you know what? I I took it off. It comes off. That's the thing about anthurium. It's like if you got an old leaf that's giving you trouble, snatch it off. Act up, get snatched up. Take that leaf off. Make yourself feel better. <laughs> uh, shout out to Koa. Koa from from the channel Koa's Plant Corner because she just did an Instagram reel where she was cutting off old leaves of her anthurium and she actually cuts hers off up here because she says that the stem down close to the base can produce inflorescence after you cut that leaf off. <laughs> Me, I was, look, this is where I, I just ripped the leaf off from the base. <laughs> But yeah, shout out to her because I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start like if an old leaf is is, is 
is worn down or it got, you know, violations like this. I'm going to go ahead and clip it off right here. And if that stem is healthy, maybe it'll produce inflow closed down by the base. So, yeah, this is my Anthurium Ezzy. It's doing fine. We made it through that summer, so I think we'll be cool. I need to see what yours is looking like, Jasmine, because I have not seen you feature that plant in a minute. <laughs> My anthurium esmeralda has been fire since I got it. Now, recently, let me go get the scissors. Hold on. Let's knock over a whole thing of water, but. Usually my anthurium esmeralda lives on the top of my shelf. However, we recently had a freak accident. Oh. We had a crazy freak accident, so let me just... No, I'm going to cut it. I'm... Let me cut it before I show it, because she got to come on camera looking good. Uh, so, in the last video that I posted on this channel, I told y'all that my light that I had on the ceiling fell off the ceiling onto the plants that were on the top shelf. So my anthurium esmeralda was unfortunately a casualty of that situation. So this leaf is gone. Now, okay. Oh, fuck. I could have won with this one if we did this a couple months ago. But in recent times, shit done not critical. It started browning on the best leaf that it had. And I think that it started getting crispy because I have been underwatering my plants for a long time. It's in the same kind of setup that everything else that I showed already is in. A little drainless situation. Even right now, it could use some water, but I like to water my Ethereums with distilled water only. I don't have that right now, so I need to really like stay more on top of having some of that around. But yeah, I mean, this is what she looked like now. Leaves always getting broken off due to unforeseen circumstances. This is the newest leaf on her. Hopefully this comes out and gets it together soon. It's having a little hiccup right here. And I think that's because this was leaned up against a pot that was next to the plant. So, oh, did I get smoked again? And another round, let me see. Yeah, because what is going on? And I definitely do agree. Like, once they get anything on them, I'm ready to chop them off. But all three of these leaves have some shit going on with them. So, I'm not about to cut off every single leaf. I just got to thug it out and I got to stick beside them. That's it. But that's my Anthurium Warakriana Esmeralda. This is really my favorite plant. Is it? Why would I say that? Do I mean that? It's one of my favorite plants. I will say that. It's my favorite Anthurium, I would say. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I got smoked. I think I got smoked in this round, too. Ain't that something? What's the next plan? And Koa, let me find out Koa come and do with the science. Because I ain't know that. All right, I got this one. I got this one. You had all the other ones, too. All right, I got this one. I got this one because I'm confident about my Hoyas. This is my Hoya Abovada Variegated Splash. Now, this may be a little bit unfair because I believe the one that you have, Jasmina, actually comes from this one. I'm very proud of this plant and I'm proud of all my Hoyas because I'm just doing well with Hoyas right now, you know? Check this out. So, I'm going to tell you, I started with a two-leaf cutting this year. Two-leaf cutting this year. It rooted up. This was the two leaves and it grew all the way around this damn rosy, ring around the damn rosy. All this year, since what? Uh, maybe February or March up until now, which is what? What is now? November. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after it grew around this whole trellis, uh, this is the end of it here. And then uh, it started to branch out in the middle here. So it stayed variegated throughout the whole plant and it grows fast. I think my main thing is soon as it's, soon as it's dry, I water it. I don't leave it dry for a long time and I, that seems to be a way to keep it growing. And uh, you know, we change seasons and it's still growing. 
you know, we got new leaves up here. One thing about Hoya leaves, the new baby leaves, you cannot touch these. It's like, I don't know what happens, but if you touch this and it seems like it's fine, the very next day, it's going to fall off. They have to be like substantial size in order for you to touch them. Well, when they babies like this, don't even touch it. Don't knock it up against another leaf or nothing like that because it'll seem like it's fine. But after it got touched, it'll think about it and be like, nah, he touched me. I'm going to fall off. <laughs> that's, that's definitely what be happening with these Hoyas. So I stay clear of the new leaves. Obavada, variegated, splash. I think the Hoya that he's talking about, I don't know what's related. I don't, I don't know all of that. I think I'm holding my own in this round. This is my Hoya Australia. <laughs> you couldn't even get it out. This is my Hoya Australis. Um, I don't have it up on the trails or anything. I cut my Hoya tendrils all the time. And in my mind, this is what I think that's doing. It's forcing the plant to grow more compact and it's also making it be bushier because I'll cut the, the whatever that is, I'll cut the tendril off and then like a growth point will be activated and it'll start pushing out leaves. Like down here, I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see that, but between these two leaves, there's another leaf right there. Now, I don't know if that's from me cutting off the damn tendril, but I just like it growing this way. I like it growing more fuller as opposed to throwing out a big ass tendril and then pushing one leaf out the tip of the tendril. With somebody trying to do that right now, this is my pubic calyx, and he has this long tendril right here, reaching for the sun, reaching for the stars. But there's leaves right here, leaves right here, and then leaves right here. That's too far apart for me. You know, that's too far apart from my liking. So I cut these off and go about my business. I really think that I held my own. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Don't give him, don't give him all the points. Like hit me with a little couple of points here and there from the goodness of your heart so I don't be a straight loser. This, this is my Hoya Pubacalyx Splash. This is a nice plant. This is a underrated Hoya because I feel like these are tangible. You can get them, uh, you know, at a lot of places. They're kind of easy to come by. So, I mean, you know, silver and splash on a Hoya is all, all the rage right now. And this is uh, one of the ones you can easily get your hands on if you do want that silver, uh, you know, pattern or variegation on it. I don't even think it's a variegation because I know the silver is, uh, I think it's like a starch within the plant surface. And that's what makes that silver color. Anyhow, my Hoya Pubacalic Splash looks dope, okay? And this is a tough plant. Let me tell you how tough this plant is. It was so dry and I was, you know, kind of embarrassed how dry it was that I tried to water it before I, you know, put it on this video. But look at this. This is how tough it is. It's just growing in a brick of dirt because I don't water this plant and it still survives. It still puts out new leaves along this tendril, you know. So the fact that it has like a very <laughs> shallow, you know, uh, very shallow soil and it's just still growing. I took a lot of cuttings from here and, um, you know, my cuttings, they root real quick and, you know, they on the shop. So this is just the mother plant that, uh, I, I need to go ahead and treat this better. <laughs> Maybe I should water it again because it's definitely hydrophobic, but let's talk about tendrils. One thing that me and Jasmina have in common is that we do not like tendrils. And I'm going to tell you now, they come off. I cut them off. I cut tendrils off because after I cut them off, they do be growing uh, new growth points. And they do look better after I cut them off. And I know as far as flowers, the whole mystery behind Hoya flowers, um, that has been satisfied already for me. I've had a couple of my Hoyas flower. I know what it's all about. It looks nice and I enjoyed it, but I'm not putting up with too many tendrils. Cause you know what it reminds me of? You remember back in the day when you had your TV, your VCR, your Sega Genesis. And then if you look behind <laughs> that TV, you see all these wires connecting into one, you know, each other. 
when you have multiple Hoyas with the tendrils, that's what it reminds me of all them wires. It's, it's, it's too chaotic. So I can snip them off. That's just what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, due to my discretion, I, I, I'll take these off and I don't want nobody making no comments about it. It's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the Hoya Hubacalic Splash. Very hardy, very easy. Get you one. Jasmina, what is yours looking like? <laughs> Hold on. I just showed my. Listen, act like I ain't just show it. Act like I ain't just show it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my. <laughs> this is my Hoya pu Bitch, this is my Hoya Pubicalix trying to take my goddamn eye out. Mine is beautiful too. I like how his looks though is more compact and like more bushy. That's crazy. I have mine growing in semi hydro. It's not in dirt. It's in not just in semi hydro, but it's um soilless. I have mine growing in rocks is what I'm trying to goddamn say. I don't like where am I? I tried to kill this plant. Not purposely, but I've almost killed this plant multiple times and had to reroot it and regrow it. And this is where we are now. This is the progress that we have made. The only thing that I have gotten to like flower or like string of turtles, they always throw out them little flower thingy jiggies, inflorescence, whatever you call them. Listen, I'm really not on the science side. I'm really not on the science side. Perhaps <laughs> this is my philodendron esmeralda dense. Um, I don't know if it's the narrow form or what, but it's an esmeralda dense. But guess what? It's a propagation, all right? <laughs> It's in a cup because I cut them up. So I got uh, three of them. One, two, three. Each leaf is a cutting that I put in here and it's starting to root up. But this is, <laughs> I mean, I figured that you probably have one and I like this new leaf. So I'm just here to compete with this leaf right here, this single leaf. <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of my Ruizy eye. Because it's like, you know, got the long pillowy, cushion looking type leaf. But yeah, that's my philodendron <laughs> Esmeralda dance. I'm not going to be a sore winner. I'm going to let them live. I'm going to be humble about it. But what I will say is that that one leaf don't got nothing on my philodendron Esmeralda that I've been... First of all, don't be rude. Now I went around. Niggas want to come through in the motorcycles. No, let me shine. Now this is my star leaf, <laughs> okay? This is my star leaf. He comes out, he does his thing, right? I always like to point him to the front, even though there's a party in the back. Now, it's been through a lot. It's been through a lot, okay? But it's coming back, and it's coming back strong. He just put out two new leaves, and got another one on the way. So I want to make sure I got two new ones. They still, um, I was about to say, he's still fertilizing. What does that mean? I don't know. I was thinking about like chickens and eggs and shit. But they still growing. They got that webbing on it that lets you know the plant is still growing. I don't know why it's ripped, but it's okay. Focus on them. They look a little fucked up right now, but they're going to get it together. I'm hoping that this one right here really comes out and does its thing. It's already long right here. From the nose to the tip of whatever this is called. It's already long, so I'm hoping... So I'll push out an even longer leaf. Yeah, I don't really know who's touching my philodendron esmeraldans. And if you are, keep it to yourself. Let me win this round. <laughs> what is this? This is a, a Monstera Siltipa Kanye West. Because that's what this plant be acting like right now. Um, <laughs> I don't really like Monstera Siltipa Kana. I really don't. I, I don't know. It's something a little bit hood rat about this plant. I have these growing outside. So I do have one growing outside, just sprawling all over the wall. This one hanging outside, and it just be having like caterpillars and grasshoppers all over it. And that's probably uh, what these holes is all about. You know, they really been eating on this plant. And uh, this plant doesn't get too much love from me. So you might got me on this one, Jazz Mita, because I'm just not in. I'm just not into Silta Pecana like that. <laughs> it does grow well when it's easy, but the fact that um, 
it's a little bit of a nuisance nuisance outside they, they grow up the wall and i don't like the way it's looking the way it does grow up the wall it kind of starts growing sideways across the wall and whatnot i don't know and i'm not putting effort into putting this one on a pole and all of that and having it grow up because if you do have one just know that it does get bigger if you let it climb up a pole and it actually fenestrates so some of the ones that I have growing like that's attaching to my wall out uh, out in the backyard they do start getting a little pinholes and then they eventually will fenestrate once they get bigger so that's that is an exciting thing about this plant but um, this plant is out I'm off it I just let it chill outside hit it with the water hose and um, maybe my mind will change one day <laughs> <laughs> And then it's dry. Like, well, come on. I'm going to water it. <sighs> Can y'all see it? This is my Monstera Sultipacana. I got to grow up this pole. What happened was the bottom leaves started to die off. It's attached into the pole as well, which is crazy. It was doing this thing. Thought it was going to start giving big leaves. I mean, it's really not that bad. If anything, I need to just air layer it right here and take it back down. What are we? One, two, three, four. We got six leaves. I mean, how motherfucking impressive could this be with just six little leaves? I don't know. But, I mean, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not too, too mad about it. Like I said, I am going to put some sphagnum moss around here and take it from there. And there's still hope. Me and this plant have been through a lot. My last resort was to just throw it up on a pole and see if I could get it to do everything that he says it's about to do. Which he really stunting on us talking about it's growing in the backyard of the wall. Like, I, I, <laughs> I hear you. But this is what we got going on over here. Nothing too impressive. I am going to put that in my list of to do's. Is to air lay this because... I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going with them. I didn't had the plant for so damn long at this point. Might as well just keep going with it. I don't see myself throwing it away because these are still a little couple of little nice leaves, you know. It's nice and it got the potential to be even nicer, so I'm not gonna let it go. But um, this is it. You could give him the round. I ain't gonna be too mad if you give him the round, but hopefully I win the next one. <laughs> Hopefully, I win the next one. Okay, where we at? Because this bitch been shutting off on me talking about 30 minutes. Like, 30 minutes. Okay. This is my Plamani eye. I have a couple of these all over the place. I got a, you know, um, got one upstairs, one up here in the kitchen, and I got this one. I feel like Philodendron and Plamani I look at it. I feel like it looks like the SP Columbia. There's a few plants that, I, what is it? Plamonii, Mame, and SP Columbia. I feel like they look so much alike. So that's why I'm going to put this one up against that SP Columbia. And the SP Columbia, I think a lot of people like it better. I'm assuming that it has a lot of hype right now because it looks just a little bit more pillowy. Maybe that's what everybody is liking, but I feel like the Plamonii is better. <laughs> I like the Plamani I just a little bit better because you got a nice detailed leaf. Some of them do have like a little silver variegation that adds to the depth of this leaf. And also got the rippled edge. So these stems do be red with ripples and then you know you got red on the back of the veins. But SP Columbia just might have a better growth pattern. Like this is a crawling philodendron. And um I just be getting irritated by the way, like it keeps sprawling out. Like, you see how this leaf wanna go that way and this leaf wanna go that way, and I just be wanting to go up. Like I be wanting it to go up, you know? Like I'm I don't want this sprawling out. And I seen the SP Columbia just grows a little bit more neat, and I seen it like really huge. So I understand um, you know, how people like it, but it's a little bit plain to me. I think this one is a little bit more detailed. So, um, this is the newest leaf on mine. This one has two shoots. This is the newest leaf, and it put out a second shoot. That's what this baby leaf right here is all about. <laughs> so, it's going to uh, 
like branch out two ways. It's gonna start running this way and probably running the other way. But yeah, um, these leaves going off to the side, like like this one, I kind of want it to be more straight up. I don't know, <laughs> but I like philodendron plamonia. That's probably why I have so many of them. So apparently I was not recording when I was showing my philodendron SP Columbia. So here she is in all her glory. I mean, I would have let the plamonia take this one because I do love me a good plamonia over the SP Columbia, but not today, okay? Because this is a competition and I'm going to ride from my philodendron SP Columbia. These are the two leaves that she came with. This is the newest one that she put out. A flawless. Fla well, I'm saying flawless, even though you could obviously see some flaws. But because she is mine and because I love her so much, my girl is flawless. And I do think that she's going to walk away with the point for this one. So, y'all be the judge, of course. But I'm just saying, I love my Philadelphia SP Columbia. I do love me a cup. I I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to front on it. I'm not going to lie run outside to get this varicosum philodendron varicosum <laughs> mine is not looking too great it lives outside <laughs> so we got spider webs and it's probably critters inside of this pot but i feel like look the fibrosum the philodendron fibrosum i do i do feel like these are similar because they have those thin leaves with the uh, Fuzzy patio. Oh, I was well, I was trying to say. Hold on, pull it. Hey, no. I was trying to say. At this point, I feel like he handed me the wins because my fibrosum is fire. But and also, I feel like you know they're both uh, cold growers because this plant is actually starting to grow a lot for me now that the temperature is cold. You know, so this is a cold grower. I, I'm gonna leave it outdoors all year round. And um, I'm hating on the fact that Jasmina has that philodendron fibrosum because when I had mine, I had it for a couple years and it tried to die twice. On the second time, I said, I'm going to go ahead and let you go because you obviously you don't want me. You know, if you don't want to be alive in my presence anymore, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to usher you to the trash can. <laughs> so I don't have a philodendron fibrosum anymore, but I do got a few different varicosums that I have propagated and uh, I like these better. <laughs> the philodendron fibrosum is very elegant, but the varicosum is classic. And you know, I ho hopefully you do well with your fibrosum, uh, Jasmina. Um, I'm not gonna waste my money on one anymore, but I will live vicariously through yours. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it down. Hold on, hold on. the kicker right here. Hold on, I'm gonna hold it down. Let me get my fibrosum. All right, so rest in peace to your fibrosum and everybody else's fibrosums and all my fibrosums that have passed away in the past. But our newest philodendron fibrosum is holding it down, okay? It's really doing good. It's really doing good. Look at it. I got it up on this little pole. None of the leaves have died off. This is the newest leaf that it was pushing out. Listen, let's really get into it because you know I love my Philadelphia Fibrosum. So this is the biggest leaf that was on the plant that I thought was going to die off. It hasn't died off. And every day I'm looking at it, I'm like, ooh, what you doing? Where we going? What we doing? And it's still holding on for dear life, okay? Good. Still good. Get up on it. Who don't want a Philadelphia Fibrosum? We all do. And we all get them and we all kill them. How long has it been since I've gotten this? Why did that? Maybe like three weeks. Maybe like three weeks. By the time y'all see this, it, it'll still be three weeks. I'm thinking by the time y'all see this, it's going to change somehow. But um, at the time of filming this video, I think I've had this for about three weeks. And you know, the leaves are beautiful. What I love about the... First of all, let me let me give him his props. I do like the Philodendron Barricosa. Alright? I do want one. Not that one. <laughs> I do want one. That one gives me like... um dinosaur reptile vibes and I don't really like that like that but I do like some of the varicosums you know just that one it gives me it gives me I already said what it gives me but anyway <laughs> what I like about the philodendron fibrosum is that it's like metallic -y. it's like a dark green metallic -y 
kind of thing. We were having an issue with the fact that there is no fibers <laughs> on my Phyllis and Rosa. But look at this new growth point that it has right here. Where we at? Can y'all see that or do I need to move? Y'all can see that? I can't tell what y'all can and can't see because the goddamn shit is fucked up. Okay. This should be a good indicator that it will be furry, but I don't know. Because I've never had a fibrosum for long enough to see it grow to this point. So, we won this round. We won this round. Me and my fuzz and fibrosum. I mean, I don't know. Because now I feel like he's throwing the game. I feel like he's throwing the game. I, mean, I don't know. But either way, I'll take it. Oh, I was supposed to say how it's growing. If I wasn't saying how these things were growing before, it's all the same. You know, I got the reservoir at the bottom, some rocks, sphagnum moss, and some other stuff. You know, everything but soil or dirt. So, I'm good. I'm good. Like, having this plant, I'm good. Because what else can I need when I have this in my life? I was going to replace the luxuriums that's dying and the palmania that's dying because I just wanted to replace them. But then I was like, do you need to replace them? You're good inside. Why am I good inside? Because I have a fillers and a fibrosa. This the kicker right here, because even though I feel like the Philodendron Luxuriance looks more like the El Choco Red, I mean, that one already competed. So therefore I had to get something to go up against that Luxuriance. And here it is. Philodendron Splendid. Ooh, we. I like Philodendron Splendid. It's been growing pretty good for me. Look at this new leaf just about the size of my face. This new leaf has really sized up. So I felt like, oh yeah, I'm going to throw this one up against that nice Philodendron Luxuriance. So let me, let me take you from the bottom. So this was the leaf that I propagated and then uh, I grew this one and I started complaining like I started complaining about this pole. I was like this pole is not making these leaves size up because it definitely started to connect right here and then these two new leaves they just weren't sizing up. So you know I put more cocoa chunk inside of this pole. Let me see if you can see that. Probably gonna be too much glare. But anyhow I put a um, cocoa chunk in this pole and we started getting this then this and then bam yeah we got some striking veins we got red back and it's a climber it climbs up and it's easy to grow so that's why i'm gonna go ahead and put it up against that luxuriance um but y'all be the judge let me know would you rather have a splendid or a philodendron luxuriance I'm scared of that luxuriance because I did import one and um, it passed away. It's gone. <laughs> but I do got one of these and it's easy to grow. Um, it's a little bit pest prone because, you know, it has like, it's related to that varicosum. So it can attract spider mites and probably other stuff that's flying around your house. But um, I do on my velvet leaf plants, I do like a lighter version of a neem oil. Spray that down, you know, like... When I make the solution, I use a little bit less uh, neem oil just so it don't make the leaves too oily. And um, but overall, it doesn't affect it doesn't bother or it doesn't damage the leaves. I just don't want them too greasy, you know, and uh, spray that down. Also, I utilize my systemic, put it in the soil media and then I think we get to go. I feel like this plant is healthy and. Um, and it's popping. My splendid. <laughs> so therefore, I had to get something to go up against that luxuriance. And shit, I'm supposed to be showing my luxuriance. Well, apparently that was the final round, and I need to get my luxuriance. I'm not gonna preface it. I'm gonna just pull it out. Now, my luxuriance. Oh shit! Hold on. Stay right there. My luxuriance was beautiful when I got it. 
it was beautiful up until I repotted it and I cut up the trunks, the stems. I cut it up, propagated pieces, and put this in this rectangle right here. But um, I was forgetting to water my plants. And I kind of let this dry out. And it kind of died out. Now, let me show you. Let me show you the bad leaf first. This is the leaf that's leaving on my Philadelphia Luxurians. Woo! Rest in peace. And get out of body. Let me go ahead and get that up out of here. Rest in peace, okay? Now that I know, now that I know, or now that I have another piece, when I get my next Philodendron Luxurians, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to repot it. I'm not going to mess with the roots. I'm not going to do nothing, all right? At least that's what I'm telling myself. We never know what I'm going to do in the future. But rest in peace with that leaf. Now, for my last standing Luxurians leaf, I feel like he can't hold his own. He's damaged. My goddamn light fell off the ceiling right onto my Philadelphia Luxurians. <laughs> so it snapped the stems. That's why that one is dying. The stem is snapped and it's just tape. So this one is surviving. But just know he is going through something. Now I know y'all would want to give him this point because his plant is a more established and well taken care of plant and mine isn't. But when it comes to the plants themselves, I really think that this, look at me having to prop the leaf up so it looks nice. <laughs> I like this more. Or do I? Let me look at it. Yeah, because it also got that reflection on it. Y'all can't even see it. But you notice that velvet. This is that velvet. It's very much so a Glorio some type velvety texture. But it got that that hue, that hue, that shadow on it. Is the hue and the shadow the same thing? Not really, but you get what I'm trying to say, the way the light is hitting it. It do a little something. It do a little something. So we down to one leaf and a little growth point. Um, I'ma let you be the judge. That was the final round. I gotta, I gotta really review the footages to see who won and who lost. But what I will say is that um, he did stun on us. He stunned on us with the backyard, with the plants going in the backyard, and then the, the motherfucking B-rolls of all the nice plants surrounding the plants. Like, that was nice. That was nice. It looks good. It looks nice. But, I mean, that's how you can live when you live in California. Over here in New York, if I dare put one of these outside, it's over. It's, we won't see it in the morning, okay? It won't be there in the morning. And if it is there, it's going to look like this. All right? So that's it. Please do thank our guests for showing up to the channel today. We really do appreciate it. I do want to say thank you as well. I really do appreciate your participation. Everybody else, like I said, be fair. Please do let us know in the comments who you think won the competition. If you have any of these plants, please let us know how they are doing in your care, whether you are on the East Coast or the West Coast. We need to know. If you have any tips for the people, do give those as well. You know, this is one time where I'm really asking you what your advice <laughs> for growing plants may be because I might have got smoked. I might have got smoke and I may need to do better. So please do leave some care tips for some of the elements that were shown in this video today. If you got the cure, let me know. And so I'm going to leave both of our social media handles in the description box, websites and everything. Dave does have an Etsy shop. It is Airway District on Etsy. So do follow the shop to see when he posts plans for sale. Thank you so much for participating in today's video. We really appreciate you here on this channel. These people <laughs> have been looking for you this whole time. So thank you so much for showing up. Everybody else, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.